Number seven, because we want to distract others from our own faults, we hate faulty behavior by creating havoc about a totally unrelated issue. Number eight, we want to cover up the lies which we spoke previously. Uh, any news where is uh, Upanishad? Gopal Tapani Upanishad? In Bulgaria. He's in Bulgaria? Is he well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Number eight. No. Number nine. We want to put down another person to falsely claim our own superiority. Reasons to act against peace. In the following chapter we will explore the reasons when and where violence and unfriendliness appear in our dealings and why we may be inclined to act against peace. During this search we will offer some solutions for establishing peace on many levels in our lives and experiencing and experience it through the practical application of OIDA therapy. In this way, we can become an activist for peace and contribute to your local community. Sustainer of life, dear sweetness of love. Cure my sisters, brothers, and myself from hopelessness and disregard for others. Our world needs peace. And I want to be part of the transformation. May all beings be happy by trying to make others happy. May all beings be free from disease caused by mistakes. May all beings have the vision of love and peace. May all be free from suffering due to our neglect. May all of us find peace in every moment's efforts. May all find world peace in our commitment to love, justice and truth. Om Shalom. Amen. Hayaya. Om Shanti. May all beings enjoy their freedom to best decision making for the welfare of all. May all become world citizens and be able to look beyond differences. May there be free drinking water. May people have food and shelter. May children have a good childhood and opportunities to offer their love. Let us pray for the blessings of all divine messages May holy names and holy places bestow their blessings on our taste for language and words. May food always be eaten offering a love prayer. Divine Mother Earth, provide of all delicious food that nurtures our body. I want to offer my gratefulness to you and all my ancestors for my very life. May my love flourish so that I may share with others the mercy I have received from the Supreme. May we all be happy. Please help me remove indifference towards dedication to your divine will. Please help me to live causing minimum sufferings to other living beings. May food be strengthened and may peace be defended on earth. <coughs> may food be strengthened. <laughs> we check on that. Okay. <laughs> Reason one. We are overcome by envy and do not feel happy. This was a prayer for success in our therapy, in our endeavor. 
So it was something a general. Now we are overcome by envy and do not feel happy about what our brothers and sisters have or are capable to do. Envy is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. <laughs> That's a good one, no? Mr. Kerry Ker Fisher said that. Solution. Envy is the root cause of all problems. To overcome it, only love can help. Instead of being envious, love can make you feel happy about other people, what other people can do or have to. Even though you do not have it or cannot do it. <coughs> that is the best medicine in life. Otherwise, the envy will plague you for the rest of your existence. First of all, we have to understand that whatever a person has or is able to do, has to do something with what he has done in the past. Grace comes of the Supreme Spirit. It is not a question of justice. It is a matter of mercy. But whoever gets mercy, he shows us that somebody has, can give mercy and that wonderful things can be obtained. A genius musician shows us what capacities lie within us. So to be able to be, so to be happy about this possibility and about anyone who reveals such a special gift makes you more dear to the great force which distributes those gifts. When I first met Krishna Das and I heard his way of making music, I was thinking, oh, how gifted is that person? He can make so many mantras sounding so sweet. He can even sing the whole Bhagavad Gita. He's so dedicated to this, these types of teachings. So I was very impressed. And more than impressed, I'm happy to present to you Krishna does on in concert tonight. That is He also opened a music school in Berlin together with his life companion and the beautiful children. And on top of that, He's a very wonderful educator. So, of all the CDs he has made, Lalita Madhava has many of them in our wonderful Harikata presentation. And please don't miss out on the concert today. And get some CDs. <laughs> Solution one. Solution two. It is obvious that in the duality of this creation we find all the extremes possible. And that accompany each and every one of us for some time. As, as the time factor orders, every life and circumstance every life finds its end. The most pleasant and the most horrible as well. So the nice things you have, they will soon be gone. And the things that you are not happy with, they will soon be also gone. And then other things will come. Other favorable circumstances and other unpleasant circumstances. Why? Is there a connection between the cause and the effect? Is there a rule? Is there a system? Those who are not intelligent cannot see the connection between the cause and the effect. And they unduly lament the unpleasant and irresponsible 
Rejoice the pleasant circumstances. Only those who understand and accept and study about the system which exists as the cause, as the action, as the reaction principle, they will accept and try to apply that under no circumstances you should blame the circumstances on the others. Nor you should be unfriendly to others due to your sadness about certain circumstances which you are subjected to. It is by the principle of ignorance that aggression and violence grow. So for the sake of world peace, we have to overcome this ignorance and accept the circumstances as lessons, as some help, which has come to teach us something. Since nobody likes to be treated badly, the first lesson to be learned is to not treat others badly, if you do not wish to be treated badly as well. Do not be aggressive to others if you do not want to be treated with aggression. As the famous saying goes, do not do to others what you do not want to be done to you. Or even better, do to others what you would like others to do to you. <laughs> Exercise. No. It's missing the exercise because... Exercise is missing. <laughs> <laughs> this is from the middle of a work we are preparing. Holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. You are the one who gets burnt. Lord Buddha. Solution. Anger is very dangerous. One of the reasons of anger is frustration. Often the frustration of our lusty desires which usually develops from unduly contemplating the objects of the senses. Anger is one of the greatest threats for world peace. Anger can destroy a family and can destroy any relationship within minutes. After an explosion of anger, people sometimes do not see each other for 30 years, even though it may have been provoked by a minor issue. <coughs> One of the peculiar effects of being angry is that you become ugly and everybody else can see that except you. <laughs> you become like a monster, but you can't see it. You become so ugly that the people who see it immediately prefer not to see you again. They may even remember it for the next year and avoid you because of that. So it is a kind of demon we all carry inside of us. And the worst thing is when people think that through the anger they can accomplish something, they can conquer something. Of course, they can scare people away like a criminal. He tells the person, give me everything you have. And so, and so, maybe the person gives you everything he has and runs away. But all the negative energy will stay with you. Anger did negative energy that changes you. Anger creates negative energy that stays with you, that changes you, challenges the efforts of the world peace therapy. Therefore, whenever you feel that anger want to come up inside of you, please consider the warning signal and try to immediately take precaution measures because later it may be too late. Measures to be taken against anger. Shut up. <laughs> Number two, try to smile. Number three, 
write on a piece of paper what is the reason that frustrates you so much at this moment and why do you think a particular other person should be blamed for that reason. Four, breathe deeply through the nose so that your belly swells at least for two minutes or if the case is serious for five, ten or forty minutes. Think about how you would want to be treated if you would have been the cause of the frustration of somebody else. Keep the paper documenting your frustration for one night. Next morning, read it again. Think about it, whether there was some momentary emotion which blew things out of proportion. Keep the paper one more day, and if on the next day you feel that the other person was guilty and treated you unjustly and should be informed about that, it should not happen again. Give the paper to the person who made you upset. Tell him, I felt like this the other day, and please excuse me, but I think you should know what impact it caused on me, what you said or did. If you follow this principle strictly, the amount of divorces will drop dramatically and the amount of friendships cancelled will reduce to almost nil. Because in most times when anger arises, it's due to some misunderstanding or some misinformation or because we were not ready to accept some reality. The only exception for this is when the anger is produced exclusively to protect someone who is incapable of defending himself and could be protected by your involvement, by the power of the impulse of your anger. Even the Supreme Spirit becomes upset when anybody hurts his beloved children. This is one example here. I will finish the reading from here at this point.